Big Nate, release the hounds. Boy Lincoln pours. Gang, I've got exciting news about our upcoming season. I scheduled a few games against the Division 1 teams. Division 1? Are you insane? No! Someone's worried about his goals against Average. I'll, I mean, we'll be crushed! So our season opens tomorrow against a team from Division 1. Thanks a lot, coach. Come on, it'll be fun. Yeah, we'll test ourselves against the best. Easy for you guys to say. You're not the goalie. I am. Has it occurred to you that I could give up, like, 50 goals? It occurs to me before all our games. I just expect it, and then if things go well, I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay, Bobcats, go get him. Season opener. <clears throat> yeah, against a super team. Those guys are Division 1. That'll work in our favor. They're overconfident. In fact, during warm-ups... I heard their coach say that our goaltending is weak. He said what? Fire lit. Huh, I guess being in Division 1 doesn't automatically make these guys better than us. The game's scoreless. What was I so worried about? These guys are nothing special. They just kick the ball just like any other team. Or maybe a little harder. Dang, with a couple of breaks, we might have won that game. Hey, losing 3-0 to a Division 1 team isn't too shabby. Yeah, you could tell they didn't expect us to play them so tough. And they didn't expect me to make so many great saves. Remember that one in the second half where I dove to my left and deflected that free kick? And then they scored on the rebound while he high-fived to the ref? Zip it, Francis. We're in glass half full mode. Great game, boys. And what a good learning experience. You discovered you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Division 1 team. If ever felt like a loss, felt like a win. This is it. You know what else makes a loss feel like a win? Gummy bears. Every team needs a chad. No gums, no glory. Go up the left sideline and... Hold it. Time out. Miranda, you're standing in the middle of our football game. I know. I want to play. What? No, you're too young. I want to play! Okay, okay. You can play free safety. It's a very important position. Yay! Go way over there by the oak tree. That's your spot. Hike! Fling! Nab! Wham! Don't you love it when a rookie comes out of nowhere? You dropped this. Want to hear my goal for this year? Only if it involves you moving away. I want to get a perfect score on everything. Every quiz, test and assignment. No 99s, only 100s. No B pluses, only A's. A's are all I care about. Wow, what a coincidence, Gina. I, too, am focused on one particular letter. Z. I got a hundred on the homework. What did you get? None of your beeswax. Fine, don't tell me. I'll just guess your score. I'll start at an appropriate number and you tell me when to stop. Seventy? Sixty-nine? Sixty-eight? Sixty-seven? Oh, how I hate her. 
My perfection streak continues. I got a one hundred on the quiz. Wow, you're so awesome! More awesome than you. You got an eighty-six. Exactly, with a zero effort. If I actually tried, Gina, I could get a hundred whenever I wanted to. You don't say. Oh no. Did you hear how Gina's trying to get perfect scores on everything for a whole year? Of course. How could I not hear about it? She sits behind me in every class, and she won't shut up about it. All Gina ever talks about is herself. Uh, hello. You're the same way. You talk about yourself all the time. That's different, Francis. I happen to be fascinating. I keep forgetting that. Hmm. I got a one hundred on the math test, and you only got an eighty-three. Sounds about right. Stuff a sock in it, Gina. Just because you're smarter than me doesn't make you better than me. You admitted I'm smarter than you. You admitted I'm smarter than you. I've just committed a strategic blunder. Ah, oh, it's so satisfying to hear you say I'm smarter than you are. Don't get too excited, Gina. Last year, I found out that I have the highest IQ in my family, and you know what changed? Nothing. Uh, what is your IQ? Oh, it doesn't really matter. Right, right. It doesn't matter. But what is it? I have regained the upper hand. There he is, Nate. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Tonya. You're just the guy we're looking for. I am. Aha!、Uh-huh. You're perfect. <laughs> well, I won't say I'm perfect, but. Can we borrow you for a minute? Borrow me to do what? Oh, you won't have to do anything. Yeah, just be yourself. So where are we going? To Lisa's birthday party. We're doing a scavenger hunt, and you're the last item on our list—a shorter than average male. I'd better get some cake out of this. Do we get bonus points for his goofy hair? School picture guy, ah, what shaking, amigo! You're a tad early, champ. I'm not doing sixth grade pics till this afternoon. Oh, I know, but I want to hang with you and be your trusty assistant, kid. Surely you've got other things to do. Meh, just classes. I like your moxie, cowboy. Okay, kid. First up, we've got the kindergartners, my favorite group. They're so full of wonder at this age. They're so curious. Wow! Look at you. Why are you so fat? Just climb on the stool, kid. I'm too hot. Just hang on till you hear the click, Devin. Click. All done. You can take off that sweater now. Yay! I'm Captain Underpants. We have a situation here. Click. All done, Richard. That means you get a sticker. Do you want Superman or Wonder Woman? I want both. Uh, it's only one sticker per kid, so I want both. I want both. Wow! Code Red. I'll break out the Twizzlers. Who's next, school picture guy? Fourth graders, champ. Okay, fourth grade. Send in the first little shaver. Young people are growing up way too fast these days. Out of my way, dweeb. Okay, kid. Time for your close up. Get on the stool. Gotcha. Say, amigo, how come you didn't get dressed up? 
because I want my school picture to be the real me. I hate it when people show up for their school pictures in fancy pants clothes they never wear. It's like, hi everybody, I'm a J. Crew model. Click. Francis, where are you going? Book club. Cool, I'll come with you. Don't, Nate. We both know you have no interest in book club. You only want to tag along for the snacks. What? That's not true. How shallow do you think I am, Francis? I'm not here for the snacks. I'm here to discuss literature. Read any good books lately? Oh, brother. Man, I've barely touched the ball all game. <sighs> I mean, I'm glad we're crushing these guys. But when you're a goalkeeper, you want to see a little action. Ah, here we go. Snap! What happened? Ah! Uh-oh, that finger looks broken. Oh, really? What tipped you off, genius? The fact that it's bending backwards at a grotesque angle? The pain is making him hysterical. No, he's pretty much like that all the time. It's a nice, clean break. It should heal quickly. Okay, how much school will I miss? You shouldn't have to miss any school. Your only problem might be some itching under your splint. Oh, well, what about pain and suffering? Can I miss some school for pain and suffering? That would be a family decision. Dad? No. Nate, Coach Calhoun stopped by to check on you. Hello, Nate. How's the finger? Oh, it's busted. I have to wear this splint for a month. Oof, there goes your soccer season. Yeah, it stinks. After you were hurt, we fell apart. We lost 4-3. We did? Try to cheer up, son. So you got to wear that thing for a month? What a drag. It's not all bad, Teddy. This splint should get me some good injury sympathy from the ladies, if you get my drift. Hey, Dorcas, hurt yourself picking your nose? <laughs> I don't get your drift. You probably heard about the game yesterday, that we lost? Yeah, we lost because of me. After your injury, coach made me play goalie. Turns out that in addition to clowns, roller coasters and Greek yogurt, I'm also afraid of soccer balls. You gave it the old college try, Chad. College? That's another thing that freaks me out. And where did General Grant go from there? Anyone? Nate? Well, me? You raised your hand. My head was itchy. I was just scratching it. Answer the question, please. I don't know the answer. I happened to be scratching my head and you called on me. Yes, because you raised your hand. No, I didn't. I can't answer the question. That's what I'm telling you. If you don't know the answer, why did you raise your hand? I was scratching my stinking head. Nate Wright is here and he claims it has something to do with his lousy dandruff shampoo. Bounce, 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 bounce. You're driving me crazy. Me? Your incessant leg bouncing. It's making me insane. Wow. Okay, thanks for telling me. Bounce, 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 bounce. I hate you so much. Stop bouncing your leg. It's so annoying. Hey, don't blame me. Blame this busted finger. 
I can't play soccer with this splint on, so I'm full of excess energy. My body's just looking for something to do. Did I hear you say you need something to do? Yes, I... I mean, now! Now! Like an extra credit research paper? Mrs. Godfrey, this isn't fair. What isn't fair? Making me do an extra credit research paper. Nate, extra credit isn't a punishment. Then what is it? If anyone asks, this is an opportunity. Yeah, nobody's gonna ask. I hear Godfrey laid some bonus homework on you. Extra credit, she's calling it. She said, you of all people need some extra credit. Can you believe her? She great shamed me. I'd never do something like that to her. He drew a 600 page graphic novel about her called War and Obese. Aha, I did do that, didn't I? What's this? My research paper, signed, sealed and delivered. You expect me to give you extra credit for this? Yeah, why not? You told me to write about someone from the revolution and I did. The American Revolution. Oh, he wrote about Major League Soccer. Nate, I'm willing to give you partial credit for your research paper. What? Why not full credit? Because this is a social studies class and you wrote about Major League Soccer. But Major League Soccer is just like social studies. The periods last way too long and most of what goes on is incredibly boring. Plus, all the real pros play at a higher level. Pumpkins, 49 cents per LV. Use caution. 49 cents a pound seems like a lot. It's very reasonable. And what's with the use caution? What are they warning us about? You know how businesses are. They're afraid of accidents. What sort of accident would happen at a pumpkin farm? Heads up! Donk! The stem broke while he was juggling. Coach, even though I can't play, I still want to contribute to the team. That's great, Nate. You can fill water bottles, keep track of the balls. Actually, I was thinking on something more tactical. Tactical? Yep. What this team needs is some coaching, said the 11-year-old boy to the man with 16 years of coaching experience. Experience is good. I'll need an assistant. Okay, Nate. I'm game. If you've got some good ideas about how to coach this team, have at it. Really? I'll temporarily step aside. You run practice today. Yes! Tweet! He has a whistle. This can't be good. Over here, scrubs! Now! Bring it in, boys. Hustle up. How come you're telling us to hustle up? Because that's what a coach does, gents. A coach? You? Yep, I'm in charge for today. So drop and give me 20 squat thirsts. Are you serious? As a heart attack, make it 30. What this team needs is some outside the box thinking. Now all season we've been playing a 4-3-3 formation, but I've invented a new formation. From now on we'll be playing a little something I call the 1-2-1-1-3-1. The what? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's not even the right number of players. What an idiot. Pants him, guys. Uh, coach? You're on your own. Guys, your spacing on that corner kick was awful. And believe me, I know. 
we goalkeepers have a unique perspective. We are used to seeing the whole field in front of us. But when you play goalie, you're always looking behind you. <laughs> Team unity is starting to break down. Here, take back your whistle. I give up. So coaching's not as easy as you thought, huh? No, these guys don't hear a word I say. Do you have any idea what it's like when people don't listen to you at all? Well, actual, I mean, these clowns are just oblivious. <laughs> Click. Ah, Mr. Worf, report to the bridge. Nate? The leaves are really starting to pile up out there. So turn off the TV and, sorry dad, I'd love to help. But with this splint on my hand, I can't hold a rake. Who said anything about a rake? This blows. Ooh. Hmm, who are those guys out by our mailbox? Ah ha 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 ha. Uh oh. Ah ha ha ha. Got to find out what those guys were laughing about. One time he handed out rice cakes. And another time it was soy nuts. What a loser. If he tries anything like that again this year, we'll hit that house and hit it hard. Here comes another post-Halloween session of scraping egg yolk off of vinyl siding. Dad, I just overheard two kids planning to egg our house on Halloween. What? Why are they singling us out? Not us. There is no us. Handing out lame Halloween treats is all you. Lame? My treats aren't lame. Broccoli florets aren't lame. Not when you dip them in lactose-free chocolate. Look, Dad, if you don't want our house to get egged on Halloween, you're gonna have to up your trick-or-treat game. Ha! Huh, I'm way ahead of you. No more handing out weak treats. This year, kids who come to this house will have a gourmet experience. Yes! I'm picturing a small but elegant sushi platter. No! Dad, you can't hand out sushi for Halloween. Maybe you're right. Not everyone likes fish. I know. What if I don't hand out food at all? What if instead I give each trick-or-treater a bright, sh shiny nickel? And what if instead of egging our house, they burn it down? Or a dime. It can be a dime. What's in there? I decided you were right about trick-or-treating. I still don't want to hand out treats that are unhealthy, but I also agree that kids deserve something special on Halloween. So I shopped around and found a happy medium. These mediums may be happy, but everyone else is going to hate you. What's wrong with cherry tomatoes? Have you noticed what I've noticed? Uh... No, Stacy has looked over here about eight times since we sat down. Me thinks the girl has a major crush on me. Want me to find out for you? I could go ask her if she likes you. No, Teddy, I don't like playing those games. I prefer the direct approach. I'll go over there myself. If I want to know if Stacy likes me, I don't need a go-between to find out for me. Aloha. Stacy wants to know if you like her. Hey, you got your splint off. Yep, just in time for Halloween. Uh, what are you supposed to be? Are you serious, Francis? I'm Lieutenant Worf. From Star Trek, The Next Generation. I think that would be obvious. I mean, I worked on my head for hours. 
and yet so much more remains to be done. Hi guys, can I join you? Are you kidding, Chad? Of course, you're the best trick-or-treater of all time. Your lethal cuteness makes it impossible for people to resist you. You're a candy magnet. My gran calls me that too, but not in a nice way. Poor Chad. Let's go over to Briar Street, boys. Nate, how can we skip to your house? Ah, because Nate's dad never had that candy. Yeah, this year he's giving out cherry tomatoes. Then why was there such a big crowd there? That wasn't a crowd, Chad. That was a mob, which explains the torches and pitchforks. Trick or treat! Sorry, I just ran out of candy. Get him up here. Actually, I have a few more boxes of junior mints. Behold the power of Chad. Let's hit Kylie Street next. Okay, hold it, hold it. How come you get to decide where we go next, Teddy? Why can't I decide? Because you're only a lieutenant. I'm a king. King is not an official Starfleet rank. Aha. Uh -huh. What about Cat? Is Cat a rank? Man, was that house lame. What was so lame about it? Just look at what they gave us, Francis. These weird caramel thingies with white stuff in the middle. They're so lame, nobody even knows what they're called. If a candy doesn't have a name, is it actually a candy? They're like the demon spawn of a milk dud and a piece of chalk. Crown. Here comes George. Ooh, your boyfriend. Cut it out, Nate. You know he's not my boyfriend. He'd like to be, though. That's the whole problem. He's going to invite me to the dance. And I'm awful at turning people down. It's so awkward. Leave this to me, Dee Dee. I'll take care of it. Huh? What do you mean? Trust me. Just move a step to your right. Hi there, Dee Dee. Foom! My hero. I do what I can. Seven bucks? Lost dance was only six. Well, I intend to get my money's worth. Lindsay, wanna dance? Can you at least let me get inside the building before I turn you down? On the bright side, technically she hasn't said no yet. Apparently girls don't like it when you try to be proactive. Look at all those girls dancing together. So? They're only doing that so they won't look like wolf flowers. But trust me, they'd rather dance with me than with each other. When I'm wrong, I'm spectacularly wrong. I already knew that about you. The song's almost over. Thanks for the dance. Actually, the song isn't almost over. It sounds like it's about to end, but there's a whole nother verse to go. We still got two minutes left. Meh, I'm good. I've been half danced. Hate when that happens. Will, I'm exhausted. What a great mix of songs. The DJ is fantastic. Yeah, school picture guy. He DJs all our dances. I'll go tell him he really brought his A game tonight. No requests, Junior. I've got a flow going. Coach John? Coach John, what are you doing here? Rocking the house, that's what. I didn't know you were a DJ. Surprised to find out I've got a life? I'm not just a beloved gym teacher, you know. You can say that again. I'm also... Wait, what? 
Woo! Good dance! I know, and I can't believe Code John was the DJ. He seemed to actually know what he was doing. Yeah, he played great music. The guy's a total psycho as a gym teacher, but as a DJ, he's not too shabby. Except for when he made us run wind sprints during side effects. Yeah, that was weird. I thought he was out of bounds, but when I saw the replay... Nate! M Mrs. Godfrey? It is 8.27 a.m. You're supposed to come to my classroom at 8 to make up the quiz you missed. I was, I mean, uh, spare me the excuses. I'm writing you up. Here, add this to your collection. Rip. <laughs> add this to your... Visit the world's largest detention slip collection. This is only 2018. 2017 is on the second floor. Cripes. Arthur, wanna play catch? Hmm, I'm not sure, Nate. At football, I am not so good. Exactly. Here's your chance to get better. Just play a little bit and gradually you will improve. Yes, except you also... One time said same thing about street hockey. Then you began to hitting me with frozen tennis ball. We needed a goalie. Hey kid, wanna play a game? We don't have enough, guys. What do you mean? You've got two, so do we. Yeah, but one of our two isn't a one. He's more like he's a... Uh, uh, hello, tough to say. Pick a fraction. It's heads. You guys kick off. Nate, what for we are playing these guys? They're super big. Arthur, relax. Sure, they're bigger than we are, but nobody's gonna get hurt in a game of touch football. One hand touch or two hand touch? Tackle was bag. Here it comes. You block Arthur and I'll run it back. Wham! What does block mean? Oh, how I hate him. Okay, Arthur. Huddle up. Let's figure out a play to run. Pss, 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 pss. A what? Pss, 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 pss. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Bomb in football language, meaning long pass. Huddle up again. Hike. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Zing. Crunch. Remind me never to visit Mississippi. The ball you just throw was actual caught by other guy. Turn on the TV! At this hour? What for? Channel 12! Hurry! Okay, okay, there. Ah, it's a commercial. We haven't missed it. Missed what? I'm going to be on live at 5. A reporter came to school today and I'm the only kid she interviewed. Wow, but why did... Shh, here it comes. In local news... A middle school science experiment got uh, heated when a sixth grader accidentally set his teacher's toy on fire. And there you are. There I am! Ah, not again! What's the matter? We are gonna hang out in the student lounge. But Gina and her cronies are already in there, yakking away. They're probably talking about me. Why would they be talking about you? What else would they be talking about? No idea. Teddy and I have decided it's not fair for Gina and her friends to monopolize the student lounge. This room doesn't belong to them. It's for everyone. We're going in. 
are coming out. <sighs> this is so much gardenia air freshener. Principal Nichols, we're having a problem in the student lounge. Gina and her friends are hold it, Nate. The student lounge is the responsibility of the students. It's up to you to work out your issues with Gina. By any means necessary? By any means necessary? No, wait, no! Teddy, it's on! What's with the bandanas, losers? Robbing a bank? We're protecting ourselves, Gina. We want to hang out in the student lounge, but your disgusting air freshener makes it impossible to breathe. The whole reason we use the air freshener is because you boys smell like Doritos and hot dogs. What's wrong with Doritos and hot dogs? And gas. Oh yeah, and gas. Listen, Gina, your putrid air freshener has poisoned the student lounge for everyone else. So I'm afraid you've left me no choice. What are you doing? Releasing the hounds. Smell them and weep. Gah! Huh, did you see how fast those girls cleared out of here? The student lounge is ours. Uh huh. The smell of my feet totally overpowered Gina's air freshener. Y yeah. Ah, fight fire with fire, I always say. Teddy? I needed to lie down. Peter, my boy. Oh no. Ready for book body time? No, book body time is absurd. I don't need a book buddy. I already read better than you do. Exactly. Which is why I brought you this. A biography of Woodrow Wilson? Very advanced reading. Right up your alley. Most kids your age couldn't handle that book. But you can. You'll understand all the major themes. You'll notice all the important details. Hey, here's an idea. After you read it, why don't you write a summary? Two pages, single-spaced. You want me to do your homework for you? And could you finish it by Tuesday? Hi, Dee Dee. Wait till he sees teaching science today. It's not Mr. Galvin. It's not, but it is. What's that supposed to? Readings. <gasps> Told ya. Mr. Galvin, you, uh, look different. I'm not Mr. Galvin. That is to say, I'm not the Mr. Galvin you were expecting. So who are you, then? My name is Mr. Galvin. Uh -huh. Wow, I'm confused. Me too, but we're wasting class time, so I'm okay with it. Allow me to explain. Your regular science teacher, Mr. Galvin, is my father. So you see, I also am Mr. Galvin. Oh, you're like his clone, except you're not as bad. Not yet. You're getting there, though. Sit down. So, Mr. Galvin Jr., you look like your dad, but do you act like him? Oh, no. He's much funnier than I am. He's always laughing and joking around. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious? So I've been told. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, huh? What do you mean? I mean, you're exactly like your dad. You're implying I'm not my own man. I don't agree. You see, my father is a science teacher. I, on the other hand, am a substitute science teacher. You're a rebel. In a pinch, I can also teach math. What was it like growing up with Mr. Galvin as your father? Yeah, 
Was it weird? Not at all. My father was an ordinary dad and I was an ordinary kid. I remember spending countless hours playing with Rosie. Was Rosie your dog? My electron microscope. Good times. Okay, boys, warm up. Let's go, bobcats. Hey, don't I know you? Um, yeah, you're Nate, aren't you? I'm Ronnie. We went to pre-kindergarten together. We're both in the red room with Miss Cindy, remember? You used to pick on me all the time. Every day you stole my juice box. Every day you pushed me off the swing. Man, did I hate you? Looks like I finally got the chance to get even. He was smaller back at Little Duckling Daycare. He couldn't have bullied someone who stinks at basketball? Nate, I forgot to bring in the morning paper. Will you grab it, please? Okay. Yep. Dad! 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 Yep! 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 What the? Where on earth did that dog come from? He was standing on our front steps. It's like he was waiting there for me. It's like he knows that this is where he belongs. See how he's making himself at home? Clean that up. We're keeping him, right, Dad? He's a stray. He's not stray, Nate. He's not wearing a collar. No, but he's clean. He's well fed. He clearly belongs to someone. And that someone is probably out looking for this dog right now. Ding dong. Rats. Ding dong. Okay, okay. I'm coming. Don't be the owner. Don't be the owner. Do you have my dog? You do, don't you? Ugh. I knew it. You do have my dog. Hold it, Gina. I've seen your dog, and this isn't it. He's my second dog, Doofus. We got him to keep Whiskers company. Wait, what? So you, a cat lover, have two dogs, and I, a dog lover, have none. Are you seeing the injustice here? Life's not fair. Suppose you explain how your dog, who you love so much, ended up on my front steps. I was brushing him. We were on the porch so his hair wouldn't get all over the house. And he suddenly just took off. Wow, so the first chance he got, your dog ran away from you. Smart boy. Smart, smart, smart boy. I hate you so much. You may begin the quiz now. Hmm, I'll skip this one, and I'll skip this one, and this one, and this one. Man, what a skippy quiz. Heh, skippy, like skippy peanut butter. I'll bet Dad packed me a peanut butter sandwich for lunch. Again, I hope you use the smooth and not the chunky. The chunky gets all stuck in your teeth. Hmm. <laughs> Lucky I still have teeth after Randy nailed me in the face during volleyball. What a butt head. Huh, what if you actually had a butt for a head? Gotta draw a cartoon about that. I could do a whole graphic novel about what a moron Randy is. And I'll call it time. Hand him in, people. How about that social studies quiz? So easy. Chunky. What you doing? Writing a children's book. What? You know nothing about writing a children's book? Sure, I do. It's a cinch. I've got a curious puppy, a mischievous monkey, a game of laser tag, a gaping head wound and a flesh-eating virus. What more do I need? How about a ghost writer? <laughs> Yeah, like I'm going to write a kid's book about a ghost. 
Great idea, Einstein. You seem skeptical that I can write a children's book, Francis. But trust me, I know what I'm doing. Read the first paragraph and tell me you're not intrigued. It is a sunny, funny morning at Cuddle Duck Farm. Borky the sheepdog went rumbling and tumbling through the pasture, ready for a happy, snappy day. Suddenly, there on the ground, Borky saw a severe, bloody hand. You're all in, am I right? Are you insane, Nate? You can't write about a severe, bloody hand in a kid's book. Why not? All I'm doing is combining two dynamic literary genres, children's books and murder mysteries. It's a genius. Borky the sheepdog tries to figure out who killed Farmer Wobblewheel while simultaneously learning all about colours. The sky is blue, the grass is green, the blood is red. Except when it dries, then it's like totally maroon. Yikes! yipped Barky the sheepdog as a large man in a goalie mask leaped from behind a haystack, laughing and holding a chainsaw. Stop! Stop! You can't put a goalie mask guy with a chainsaw in a children's book. You'll scare your readers. Okay, okay. I don't want to freak anybody out. I'll just get rid of chainsaw guy. Instead, he'll be a party clown. Stop again. Barky the sheepdog stared in horror at the bloody foot on the barn floor. It was the fifth piece of farmer wobble wheel he'd found today. And don't forget about the three pieces we found yesterday, said Winky the wonder monkey. What's a monkey doing on a farm? Helping Borky discover who dismembered Farmer Wobblewheel and teaching us about numbers. Five pieces plus three pieces, barked Borky. That makes eight, chuckled Winky. Ew. Still working on your stupid children's book? Just finished it. And did Borky the sheepdog discover who killed Farmer Wobblewheel? Nobody killed him. He died of a heart attack. But he was in pieces all over the barnyard. Right, because he was torn apart by his flock of pigs. Flock? The moral of the story is, respect animals or else. Hi, may I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a Christmas present for my sister. And she asked for perfume, so say no more. I'm here to help. How old is your sister? Fifteen. And is she a girly girl? Or a tomboy? Or she's pretty girly, I guess. What kind of sense does she like? No idea. But what difference does that make? Whatever perfume she wears, it's me and my dad who have to smell it. So, on that note, got anything that smells like bacon or nachos? I'm new here, but I'm pretty certain the answer is no. Ooh, even better, bacon and nachos. Hi, Graham. Ooh, making molasses crinkles? Yes, but they're not for us. They're for the church cookie swap. What's that? A holiday get-together. You bring a plate of your own cookies and you leave with a plate of other people's cookies. But that's not a fair swap. Your cookies are better than other people's. Fortunately, I have the good manners not to mention that to the church ladies. Well, I don't. This is an outrage. Nate's coming with us to the cookie swap, Vaughn. Thank goodness. I'll be able to talk with my grandson instead of pretending to be interested in the non-stop chatter of Ernestine Crowley. Wait a minute. I thought you liked Ernestine Crowley. Then I have done my job well. 
The key word there was pretending, Graham. Ah, oh, Marge, I see you've brought your famous molasses crinkles again this year. Yes, and did you bring your chocolate walnut cookies as usual, Evelyn? I certainly did. Wonderful. My husband loves those in his own way. I use them as hockey pucks when the pond freezes. Well, Jody, your mother tells me this is your first cookie swap. That's right. I mean, I've come along with Mom many times, but I've never baked anything till this year. And because your cookies are always so popular, I decided to make molasses crinkles just like you. Rookie mistake. You want to be Rembrandt? Don't try to paint like Rembrandt. Happy holidays, Vern. Oh, hi there, Marion. Care to sample a cookie? Um, all right. I call them my secret ingredient specials. What's the secret ingredient? I'm guessing sawdust. If you don't mind me saying so, Marge, I believe your molasses crinkles are a bit dry this year. <laughs> My double fudge brownies, on the other hand, melt in your mouth. They're absolutely irresistible. Most of your brownies are still on the plate you brought from home, Linda. They appear to be more resistible than you suggest. Down goes Linda. There's no shade like the church lady shade. Graham, mm-hmm, what do you want for Christmas? Oh, heaven, sweetie, not a thing. When you get to be as old as I am, you've already got everything you could possibly need. But I want to give you something. Oh, honey, you're a good one, and I love you for asking. But just being together during the holidays is the best gift of all. And if you ask your grandfather, I'm sure he'll say exactly the same thing. Gramps? Yup. What do you want for cri- Pants. Dad, let's get this out of the way so I'm not disappointed tomorrow. I'm not getting a dog for Christmas, right? <sighs> I'm sorry, Nate, but as I've told you before, having a dog makes no sense unless someone is home all the time to take care of it. So if I drop out of school, I can have a dog. Let's start again. Here you go, Ellen. Merry Christmas. Uh, it's kind of big. You do remember I asked you for perfume, right? Sure. But perfume is a total rip-off. It's so pricey. So instead I found a less expensive option. Febreze Harvest Pumpkin? It smells like pie. Teddy, Nate, did you get the Xbox you wanted for Christmas? Or the snowboard? Or the laptop? No. Did you get the dog you asked for? Or the go-kart? Or the trip to the wizarding world of Harry Potter? Nope. I love post-holiday gift disappointment bonding. Let's go find out what Francis didn't get. Hello, Nate. Hi, Mr. Astis. The Spitz you want to come out and play in the snow? I don't think he'll want to. He's very happy inside at the moment. Frankly, I can't tear him away from his Christmas present. You had me at hello. It may have been a mistake to get him a Netflix account. He's watched Jerry Maguire four times in a row. Come on, Spitzy. You can do better than that. If you're going to binge on Netflix, at least binge on something good. Here, click. Space, the final frontier. Define good. Come on, Spitzy, that's enough Netflix. 
Let's go outside where we can move around. He wants to stay rooted to the same spot all day, right? Right? Spitzy, you idiot. Pow! Huh, nailed you, scrub. Thanks a lot, Randy. Hey, no need to thank me. It's my pleasure. Anytime you just want to get punked, let me know. Pow! Stay away from him. Pow! He's mine. I'm a pawn in Miranda's turf war. Can we use the table, Dad? We're gonna play Monopoly. Our Monopoly game is gone. Gone? Ellen took you to Amelia's house. Apparently, that's how your sister and her friends are going to ring in the new year. But that's my thing. How about a nice game of charades? Since my dumb sister swapped Monopoly, we'll have to play some other New Year's game. This is where you keep the games, right? Yeah, what's in there? Three dominoes, a Candyland game piece, and apples to apples. We're not a very gamey family. Oops, my bad. It's Apples to Apples Junior. Somewhere in this house, there's got to be a game we can play. Are those games? Nope, jigsaw puzzles. What's this over here? Here, kitty kitty. No, the crazy cat collecting board game. No! Guys, wait, what are we doing? We're playing here, kitty kitty. After all, we play a board game every New Year's Eve. It's a tradition. It's tradition to play Monopoly, not this thing. Hey, this game is pretty much the same as Monopoly. Only instead of collecting properties, the object is to collect as many adorable stray kittens as you can. Kill me now. You're up, Nate. It's your turn. No, I refuse. As a cat hater, I can't in good conscience take part in a game that glorifies felines. Here, Kitty Kitty is an absolute disgrace to the institution of board games. This is where I point out that we found this game in your house. Wait, there is an institution of board games? I'm pretty sure. Francis has a point, Nate. What's here, Kitty Kitty, doing in your house? How should I know? Maybe it's my sister's. Maybe we got it as a gift from some crazy cat-loving great-aunt. A person can't be held responsible for every little thing in his attic. Remember that time in your attic we found? We agreed never to speak of that again. And begin. One, two, easy questions. Three, four, more difficult but still answerable questions. Five, six, tough questions. Seven, eight, obscure questions. Nine, ten, intentionally unclear or misleading questions. Eleven, twelve, take a wild guess because there's no way you know these questions. 13 to 20, questions you suddenly realize you don't have time to answer, but couldn't answer even if you did have time. Hand them in, people. Anatomy of a D minus. I think I did well. Me too. <sighs> Hi, Mr. Shipolsky. Oh dear, are you here to see the principal, Nate? What? No, I'm here to see you, Mrs. S, to say hello, to wish you Happy New Year, to brighten your day, Bial, and to mooch leftover Christmas candy from my desk. Well, if you're offering. Can I have some of your chips? One, you can have one chip. 
Hey, I said one. Okay, okay. I'll put some of them back. What? Come on. You're touching every single chip. I'm putting them back where they came from, Francis. Just take it. Take the whole stinking bag. My plan's working. Ooh, that brownie looks tasty. Here we go again. You are such a mooch. All I did was say your brownie looks good. Exactly, because you want me to give you some of it. Okay, Francis, relax. If it's such a problem for you, I won't talk about your stupid brownie. Good, because you're not getting... How about those grapes? You gonna finish those grapes? Face it, Nate. You're a total mooch. Me? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. All you do is borrow and beg for stuff. Like what? Give me an example. Gladly. I'll write down all the ways you're a mooch. And I'll write down all the ways I'm not. Can I borrow a pencil? Aha! Uh -huh. Francis says I'm a mooch. You? No, I don't think so. I won't call you a mooch. Yes! Yes! Thank you, Dee Dee. I'd call you a thief. Notice that your hand is in my bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. What? How'd that happen? I don't have enough for the vending machine. Have you got a quarter? There. See, you are a mooch. It's not mooching, Francis. It's borrowing. And for your information, it's a two-way street. Sometimes I borrow from Teddy, sometimes he borrows from me. It's all evens out in the end. Right, Teddy? Right, Teddy? This brings your tab to $308. Randy, come here! What do you want? Just come over here. Nice try, scrub. I recognize a trap when I see one. I nailed you with the snowball yesterday, and now you want to get me back. You're trying to lure me over there so your little friends can jump out from behind the shed and ambush me. You think I'm stupid? Wham! Yes. Randy looks tired. Principal Nichols, what are you doing in social studies? I'm here to observe, Nate. It's part of my job to watch all the teachers at work to assess their performance in a classroom setting. So, you're grading, Mrs. Godfrey? In a way, yes. Pretend I'm not here. Hello, F minus. Why is Principal Nicole sitting back there? I just asked him that. Turns out he's observing Mrs. Godfrey to see if she's a good teacher or not. The question is, how do we show him that Mrs. Godfrey is lousy at teaching social studies? Just show him your last test. The one where you identified Alexander Hamilton as a defense man for the Carolina Hurricanes. People, you may have noticed that Principal Nichols is joining us today. He'll be observing us and taking notes. Otherwise, it'll just be another class. Just act as you would on any other day, and I'll do the same. Great! Now clear your desks for a pop quiz. Did you see that? That's the second pop quiz she sprung on us this week. Yes, Nate, I saw. She does stuff like that all the time. She likes to see us suffer. And guess who she wants to suffer the most? Me. She hates me. She's always picking on me, hounding me. Nate, sit back down, please. See, she's relentless. Well, that was certainly an interesting class, didn't you think? 
I did indeed. I mean, Mrs. Godfrey could not control the classroom. Am I right? It is complete bedlam in there. Somebody even started throwing pencils. That was you. Well, yeah, but the point is, Mrs. Godfrey totally lost the room. So what's the scoop, big fella? What was your take on Mrs. Godfrey as a teacher? That's confidential. But I'll say this, Nate. As long as you're here at PS38, Mrs. Godfrey will also be here at PS38. Sometimes I feel like one of those comic strip characters who never gets older. That's my dream. Oh, come on! Ellen! What? We all have to use this bathroom, you know, and we're all supposed to keep it clean. I know that. Oh, do you? Do you really? Then why, when I'm trying to brush my teeth, am I looking at a massive pile of eyebrow hairs on the counter? If you want to trim your unibrow, be my guest. Have yourself a pluck fest. But don't leave your clippings all over the place. It's disgusting. It's nasty. It's... Those are my nose hairs. The bad situation just got much, much worse. And a few ear hairs, too. <sighs> What's wrong, Chad? Some seventh graders gave me a nickname I don't like. Because my last name's Apple White, they started calling me Apple Cheeks. Then they shortened it to Hey Cheeks. <laughs> Poor Chad. Why is everyone calling me Cheeks? I never asked for a nickname. Nicknames always take on a life of their own. As they evolve, you're started out as Apple Cheeks and then it changed to Cheeks. But I don't want to be cheeks. Calm down, Chad. It'll probably change to something else before you know it. What's up, butt cheeks? Snicker. See? To sum it up, Chad, kids are calling you cheeks and you want to stop. Right. You've come to the right place, my friend. I happen to be an expert in these matters here. Nate Wright, Licensed Nickname Intervention Consultant. Shall we discuss my fee? Kids are calling Chad Cheeks? Yeah, and it's really bumming him out. I haven't heard anyone call him that. That's because you're always wrapped up in all your drama club stuff, Dee Dee. Unlike me, you don't have your finger on the pulse of the street. Street? It sounds a lot better than hallway. The way to get rid of an unwanted nickname is to replace it with one you do want. So what do you want people to call you, Chad? Something cool, like Puma. I'm saying this with love, Chad. You're not a Puma. Oh. Plus the first syllable is Poo. That's a bad look. Okay, Chad. I've planted the seed for your new nickname. Uh, planted the seed? I talked to some kids at lunch, and instead of cheeks, I refer to you as macaroni. What? That's worse. But remember, nicknames evolve. It'll start as macaroni, but then it'll change to macarina, then mocassin, then slipper, then slippery, and then... Yo, slick! I'll invoice you tomorrow. Antiques in your attic. Hiya. Hello. What have you got there? Remember that episode when somebody had an old crazy cat comic strip worth 50,000 bucks? I do indeed. Well, get a load of this. The bloody good adventures of Dr. Cesspool? A Nate Wright original. I'm uh, not familiar with that name. An underground cartoonist, perhaps? Nope, I drew it above ground. Wait, you drew this? Who else? 
How much do you think it will be worth in a few years when I get famous? Security? Don't bother. These people are total hacks. Mr. Rosa, can I hang out here till lunch is over? Sure, Nate, but I can't be too chatty, I'm afraid. I'm in the middle of lesson planning. What's lesson planning? It's the countless hours I spend designing the projects we do in class. Ha 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 ha! Here come the air quotes. Lesson planning in art? Despite your scepticism, Nate, our art projects do require some planning. Ahem, sorry. I just meant that they seem sort of, uh, spontaneous. That's a good thing. An art project uh, shouldn't seem overly scripted. It should seem natural. What's natural about glowing cotton balls inside a shoebox to make an arctic landscape? He has a point. Again, we're drawing a bowl of fruit. It's called a still life, Nate. It's one of the great themes of art history. Okay, but why? Why? When teachers repeat the question, it means they don't have an answer. Nuts. All I'm saying, Mr. Rose, is can't you draw something besides a bowl of fruit? Well, what would you rather draw? Me? You want to do a self-portrait project? No, I want everybody to draw me. Of course you do. I won't pose nude, but I'll be willing to strip down to my boxers. Mr. Rosa, I don't think I can finish my still life drawing. What's the problem, Sheila? The arrangement has changed. You mean someone moved the fruit? Well, I'll just put it back the way it was. Good luck with that. I was hungry. You ate the still life? Not all of it. There's some left. You expect your classmates to draw banana peel, an apple core, and one grape? Okay, okay. I'll make this right. I'll fill in the gaps with stuff from my locker. Hang tight. In this job, there's no other way to hang. Does still life mean dead? Because I can grab some live stuff. Hi, Gramps. Why the long face, boy? I just tried to sell this to classic comics and they turned me down. The bone-crushing feats of momentum, Hollywood stuntman. I drew it myself. It's a masterpiece. So I see, so I see. How will I ever become a real cartoonist if I can't sell my stuff? Well, tell you what, son. I know quality when I see it. I'll buy it from you for ten dollars, cause that's a fraction of its true value, but I'll take it. Thanks, Gramps. You're a good grandfather, Vaughn. How much will you pay for all these? And a lousy businessman. It would be sort of nice to have a boyfriend, but there are no nice boys available. Dee Dee, hello? I'm available. I've been snorted. And I rolled a daily double. Dee Dee, how come you're so quick to rule me out as a boyfriend? Don't be weird, Nate. We're friends, that's all. But sometimes friends turn into more than friends. And if I do say so myself, I have a lot to offer. Like these tater tots, for example. This is so not romantic. Come on, Dee Dee. Haven't you ever thought about you and me going out? Nope. Dating you would be like dating my cousin. But we're not cousins. That's not a reason. Plus, you have weird hair. That's a reason. Nate, be honest with yourself. You're not really interested in going out with me. You just like the idea of having a girlfriend. You date anything. You date a bar of soap. I, for one, am in favor of you spending some time with a bar of soap. 
Shut up. You know, all I said was that it might be nice to have a boyfriend. And then you made it all about you. She's right. You always do that. Huh? I guess I do do that. But why do I do that? Let's discuss. Let's not. Sorry, Dee Dee. You're talking about finding a boyfriend and I wasn't paying attention. Forget it. Like I said, there are no nice boys available. Sure there are. You just need help finding them. Zip! Nate Wright, super sleuth at your service. And what could possibly go wrong? Who are you supposed to be? Sherlock Holmes? Just a humble private eye doing my job. And what is your job? To find Dee Dee a boyfriend. But I didn't ask you to find me a boyfriend. You didn't have to. I detected your desperation. Did you also detect that your fly is open? Tally ho, Dee Dee. Natrot Ace Detective is off to find you a soulmate. I'll leave no stone unturned. I'll use all my sleuthing skills to... <coughs> I accidentally inhaled some of my bubble juice. Smooth. Natroid detective and matchmaker at your service. Matchmaker? I'm trying to find a boyfriend for Dee Dee. Any interest, old bean? Um, in Dee Dee? Um, probably not. She sort of, what I mean is, she's a little too... Apparently, you have a reputation as a bit of a drama queen, said the kid with the cape and the bubble pipe. Greetings, chaps. I'm doing a bit of investigative research. What do you guys think of Dee Dee? Dee Dee seems cool, except she's friends with some dork who dresses up like Inspector Gadget. Finding any clues in there? People don't like talking to detectives. You know who'd be a great boyfriend for Dee Dee? Miguel. Miguel? He's artsy, just like her. He's funny. He has a lot of the same friends. Ah, there he is. But, Miguel, have I got a gal for you? He's not very good at this. I promised you results and I'm delivering results. What do you mean? I found you a potential boyfriend, which I never wanted you to do in the first place. While you're sleuthing, Jim and I found out we like each other, so it's all good. Not all good. Sorry, Chad. Ahem. Mr. Galvin, I didn't finish the homework. Oh, why not? Uh, my uncle's been really sick. I've been too upset to focus on schoolwork. Oh dear, your Uncle Ted? No, another uncle. Uncle Stan. I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, he's got a bad disease. I forget the name. Here's what else you forget. You forget that I've been teaching here for over 40 years. That means I taught your father and I taught your Uncle Ted. Strangely enough, though, I never taught their brother Stan. There's nothing worse than a really old teacher with a really good memory. Guys, look, the latest edition of Fantastic Facts. Grrr. Oh no! Why oh no? Because now you're going to bombard it with all kinds of useless information. It's not useless, it's fantastic! Now let's find some gems to shock and astound you. Anything in there about trivia-induced homicide? No, but here's a fascinating tidbit about Don Beatles. Here's an interesting fact. Two-thirds of the world's eggplant supply is grown in New Jersey. Huh? That's
that is pretty interesting. Pow! Don't encourage him. And here's another eggplant factoid. Here's a fun fact you guys won't believe. For every human being on earth, there are one million ants. Your awestruck silence speaks volumes. Ah, uh, what? Silence is boredom, Francis. Guess how many elephants it would take to... Hey, I have an idea. How about you let me eat my hot dog in peace instead of swamping me with useless trivia? Okay, just one fact, then I'll stop. Deal. 2% of all hot dogs contain human DNA. <sighs> time to fight fire with fire, Francis. Each time you tell me some useless fact, I'll tell you some Star Trek, the next generation trivia. The average lifespan of an eyelash is 5 months. Stephen Hawking is the only person to play himself on a Star Trek episode. Bats always turn left when leaving a cave. Patrick Stewart almost didn't get the role of Captain Picard because he's bowed. The eyes of a donkey are uniquely positioned to allow... And the Klingon language there's not... Kill me now. And did you know that the average person consumes... Ah! I can't take it anymore! This book is ruining my life! I quite agree. Oh, hi. Ah, Breakneck Hill, the perfect spot to practice your rescue dog skills, Spitzy, will set up right here beside the steepest drop-off. When people wipe out, you run over there and dig him out of the snow. Then we lift him onto the ambusled and pull them to the first aid station. Hey, wait! Not yet, Spitzy! Not yet! Spitzy! Look out! Wham! An aspirin for the kid and a brain transplant for the dog.